societal burden of Parkinson's disease is going to be enormous. Um, most people now regard this as a, uh, as a condition that's uh, increasing in its prevalence and the numbers as are predicted are set to double by 2030 to 2040. The impact of Parkinson's therefore will be felt across the world but more importantly more on the economically more economically viable countries for reasons that are not totally unclear but also countries which have more populations such as China such as India would have vast numbers of people with Parkinson's. The other issue that we need to contend with is that we live longer and as we live longer with healthy aging and such things there's going to be more people in the 80s and 90s and this is the population group where the number of Parkinson's is likely to be hugely uh, increased. So the societal bar burden of this condition is going to be enormous, perhaps in the next 20 to 30 years. There are many unmet needs in Parkinson's disease uh, in spite of major advances in the treatment of motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. These unmet needs um, are the lack of any neuroprotection therapies in spite of over 30 clinical trials. In addition, understanding and management of non-motor symptoms remain the key unmet need. A recent review by the MDS Task Force uh, on evidence-based treatment of non-motor symptoms acknowledged this and cited a range of symptoms such as fatigue, anxiety, pain, apathy, all of which needs uh, well-controlled studies. The pathophysiology of Parkinson's, the understanding of pathophysiology has improved and we, we know much more, for instance, the molecular side, uh, how alpha synuclein works in the brain or in the periphery, what is the toxic part of this molecule and what it causes downstream. We know more about genetics, some aspects of genetics, particularly glucocerebrosidase mutation, LARC2 mutation, and their important role when people go on to develop Parkinson's carrying these genetic mutations. And finally, the gut has emerged as one of the main areas of interest. This is because we know that the microbiota can be substantially abnormal. And proposed theory is that the abnormal aggregates of mole alpha-synuclein molecule might be transported up from the gut by the vagus nerve into the brainstem thereby precipitating inflammation within the brain and spread of neurodegeneration. These are theories, these are speculations. Um, there is also a theory, for instance, the problem might actually come from the brain to the gut for the vagus, the other way. But it does provide us with an opportunity to new treatment strategies, altering the gut microbiota, such as by using transplantation, fecal transplantation, or by using probiotics, which can get into the lower part of the gut, or looking at neuroprotection from the gut angle and I think these are very exciting developments we will see in the future. Well, as we know, uh, none of the attempts at disease modification in Parkinson's disease have been successful. Uh, there could be many reasons for that. Uh, starting therapy too late uh, because of not taking into account the prodromal stage of Parkinson's disease, for example, or targeting only uh, the pominergic system of the brain. Uh, the work uh, we have done uh, has identified several uh, non-depaminergic clinical phenotypes in Parkinson's disease, which are non-motor subtypes. And in these groups, drugs uh, which may target holinergic or serotonergic system of the brain may be very important. Uh, in fact, uh, there are several compounds in development um, which targeting non-dopaminergic system of the brain and we now need to await uh, the results of these studies. Um, I think after almost 60 years of treatment with levodopa, it still remains our best drug. Um, however, we do have ways to deliver this drug better, uh, and that is one of the main focuses of our treatment for the future. Uh, you can deliver levodopa by infusion now. Uh, that infusion can be made even more effective by combining the levodopa with Compton inhibition, which is also happening. 
levodopa is being uh, looked at to be delivered through subcutaneously through a skin patch and a micro pump attached to the patch uh, to the pump the so-called patch pump therapy so that can mimic the subcutaneous infusion of levodopa um, we also have levodopa uh, attempts of being delivered through the through inhalation and there are other drugs that are being delivered through the buccal route so there are many different ways of delivery that is being looked at and finally people are also looking at gastroretentive preparations where the capsule sits in the stomach and slowly releases the drug uh, over a long period of time uh, how effective these will be remains to be seen but certainly there are many clinical trials in progress now or are planned which will be of great benefit i believe